servant of the most high God. You shall be blessed. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I thought that was for Jesus. You can do it better if it is for Jesus. What a mighty God we have serve. I thank God for this wonderful privilege to be here tonight. I count it a privilege every time God gives me the opportunity to declare his counsel. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for God's servant, Dr. Simon Agbalabori, for the great work God is using him to do. I thought we'll give the Lord a mighty clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for his wife. Amen. Pastor Pat, a woman of virtue. Um, just seeing her, I could just feel the grace of God upon her life. Amen. And I thank God for this wonderful ministry. And every one of you that is here tonight, I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus. Uh, when he began to introduce me, I'm like, wow, do they have another speaker here tonight? But to God be the glory. I thank God for what God has planned. We thank God for the life of his servant, Bishop Wale Oke. I believe that the hand of God will be upon him because we have prayed for him. And the Bible says God will strengthen him out of Zion. Uh, you're not going to miss too much uh, by the grace of God. Uh, you might not even miss anything at all because uh, my name is also Wale. Can I hear your amen? amen? I know he has a big shoe that I might not be able to fit in but I will just wear my own shoe and use <laughs> the glory of God upon his life. Can I hear your amen? amen? I believe that God is up to something. Uh, God will, God, nothing, nothing ever catches God by a surprise or accident. God is a perfect planner. God ordained today from the foundation of the world. And he had you on his mind. He has a plan for you. He has a counsel concerning you. Amen. I salute all the ministers of God in the house. The Lord will honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. I, most time I'm like, when you see anointed men of God seated, how do you go? So I just call on the Holy Spirit. And I say, just do what you want to do. God will do something unique. Can we lift up our hands and appreciate the King of Glory? Lord, there is none like you. None will ever be. You are the King of Glory, the Lord Eternal, the always God. We thank you. We celebrate you. We worship you tonight. We thank you for this unique gathering. We thank you for your eternal counsel. As we look into your word, I ask that you speak to every heart. Let everyone here have an unusual encounter with your word. Let someone move from zero to heroes. You have spoken, your word will not return to you void. The siege that you have lifted. Let it become a reality, a practical, tangible reality in the life of everyone present, oh God. I thank you. Quicken your word in our hearts. Quicken your word in our spirit. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Jesus, we celebrate you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh, Lord. We cannot do without you. 
We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh, do something new in our life. Something new in our life. Something new in our life. Oh, Lord, do something new. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? You may please take your seats. God bless you. We're going to have a very powerful time, I trust God, starting now. These three days. It's going to be three days of heaven on earth. Our God is still alive. The siege is lifted. I want us to know that every supernatural move of God is initiated by a prophetic word. Every supernatural move of God is initiated by a prophetic word. Before God will do anything, he will send his word. Prophetic words are words spoken by the prophets of God. The Bible says, he whom God sends speaks the word of God. How do you know who is sent of God? It is someone that has the word of God in his mouth. Because without the word of God, we can't do anything. We have a word. The siege is lifted. The Bible says, by a prophet... Israel, God brought Israel out of Egypt by a prophet. He preserved them. Every deliverance is rooted in a prophetic word. We already have a prophetic word over this gathering. And that is the way we are going to be suffering throughout these three days. God has spoken. His word will not return to him void. Oh, I can't hear your believing amen. The scripture says, God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to his servant, the prophet. Every time God desires to do anything in any life, in any situation, he speaks to his servant. Until God has spoken, nothing can be done. But when God has spoken, everything is already done. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. I was meditating this afternoon and it just struck me that God doesn't actually tell you what he wants to do. God tells you what he has already done. Yeah. Hmm. God doesn't speak what he wants to do because anything God says, it is done. I have given to you, Sheha, the king of Amorite, he said, but begin to contend with him in battle. I, God, have given him. Deuteronomy chapter 2, I believe, verse 24. Every time God wants to give you anything or does anything in your life, he says it. And when God said it, says it, it is already done. So the siege is lifted. Surely the Lord will do nothing. But he revealed his secret to his servant, the prophet. Amos chapter 3 and verse number 7. God's counsel is usually revealed through his chosen prophets. Whatever God reveals, that is what God is said to do. Because it has already been done. So God is revealing it to us. So that we can position ourselves to receive the manifestation of what God has already settled in his heart. Hello, somebody. Whatever God reveals, those are the things which he has proposed to do and has already done. So we are here on a prophetic wing. This is a prophetic gathering. 
you know, the uniqueness of a prophetic gathering is that the prophetic word has been spoken. We are beneficiary of God's counsel. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. You see, the church, in a bid to get revelation, we miss the move of God. In a bid to hear more, we don't pay attention to the details. Everything God desires to accomplish, he settles it by the sent word. Until the word has gone forth, then God cannot do anything. And every word that goes forth from the mouth of God shall never return to him void. It will accomplish that which God pleases. So when God speaks, it is already done. So we have a prophetic word because God will do nothing. He revealed his secret to his servant, the prophet. God has spoken over the prophet of this house. And that made my assignment easy. Because we know the revealed mind of God. The secret things belong to God, but the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children, that we may do all his word. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed, <laughs> the siege over your life is lifted. I say the siege over your life is lifted. That means every satanic assault on your life, every satanic harassment on the life of your family, your children, every limitation, every boundary set by the enemy to limit you, God is taking away those limits. You are going to begin to experience success without limits, blessings without boundaries. Oh, I can't hear your believing amen tonight. God has programmed these three days. For your change of story. <laughs> we had the definition of a siege. A siege is an action of an armed forces that surrounds a fortified place and isolates it and brings it under continuous attack with the intention of subduing that city. Whatever the enemy has planned, against your destiny. There are a lot of people that are under siege. You want to make progress, but you find out that you are trying, and it seems as if you are just idling on the same spot. You have done all you could to, to liberate yourself. In fact, you know you are bigger than where you are right now. You know it on the inside of you, but it's as if you can't attend to it. The more you try, the less it becomes a reality. So you are wondering what is going on. You measure yourself with your colleagues. And you find out that you have not measured up. You are wondering. You came to the U.S. with an American dream. But if you have your way, you will have run back to where you came from now. It's a satanic attack. And God is here in these three days to change your story. I didn't hear your amen. amen. That amen can be louder tonight. Amen. We see a graphic illustration of a siege in 2 Kings chapter 6. Please follow closely tonight. I have come to realize that God is still alive. And whatever God says he will do. God does it. I have come to realize that Christianity is not entertainment. As a pastor, I don't entertain. I have come to realize that my function as a, as a man of God is not motivational speaking. It's life transformation. Impartation of destiny. And I have come to realize that God is real for as many as have an open heart to seek him. God will never tell you what he will not do. But God also wants us to be able to take him at his word. Can I hear your amen? amen? I've also realized that the ways of God are not our ways. As the heaven 
is higher than the earth. So are his ways. Higher than our ways. And his ways are superior ways. And I've come to realize, I said to the church on Sunday, I said something very profound. And I've been thinking about it. Everything God tells us to do that will change our life doesn't always make sense. Okay. Moses, I'm going to part the Red Sea. I expected him to say, go get engineers to build bulwarks, whatever they're going to build. Get tractors. He said, just lift up a rod. How sensible is that? To the natural mind, the things of God are foolishness. Can I hear your amen? amen. Oh. Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. Jesus, we don't need no water. We want wine. But he said, fill the water pot with water. Okay, we obey. Then pray. No. Just draw it out. My God. I can imagine you coming to your pastor and say, my boss is outside. Say, I should give him some wine. And your boss said, take this water and give it to him. Say, that is my boss. He's not my colleague. He's my boss. He want me to lose my job. He said, the governor of the feast was there. So I came to the realization that in every nonsense that God says, there is a sense. God doesn't speak sense to natural man, to spiritual man. He speaks faith. That is why people of the world can't comprehend God. Can I hear your amen? amen. What am I saying? These three days will change your story. I want you to connect with everything on the inside of you. Can I hear your amen? amen? Look at this scripture. Second Kings chapter number 6. This is a graphic illustration of a siege. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hard, king of... That's 24, Second Kings chapter 6 verse 24. Ben-Hard, king of Syria gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine. Somebody say famine. In Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cup of those, those dung for five pieces of silver. What I want you to see from this scripture before I even go ahead is that whenever there is a siege over any life, it leads to lack. It leads to famine. It leads to affliction. Because if you go ahead to read the scripture, they began to eat what they were not supposed to eat. They began to eat dung, those dung for food. Just like there is recession in the land now. Is because there is a besieging of the land. Can I hear your amen? amen? And when I say the land, I'm not talking about the nation because I want you to know that even in the midst of this recession, there are people that are breaking through. There are people that are prospering big time. So I believe it's time to disassociate yourself from the world. Because your case is different. Amen. I say your case is different. Amen. And that is what God wants to do. All manner of afflictions came because the land was besieged. And the woman cried to the king. Look at verse 26. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried the woman unto him saying, Help me, my lord, O king. Help me, O king. And he said, if the Lord does not help thee, when shall I help thee? Listen. The solution for your breakthrough and your destiny is not in the hand of the government. The government can't bail you out because even the government needs bailout. They are all confused. 
So they can't help you just like the king because the king represented the authority, represented the government of the land. He said, I can't help you. If the Lord doesn't help you, I can't help you. So you need to settle it in your heart. Your help is only coming from one place. It's from the law. It can't come from your neighbor. It can't come from your colleagues. It can't come from your family members. So stop getting angry at those whom you have spoken to to help you that have turned you down. They are actually not the source of your help. If God doesn't help you, no man can. Can I hear your amen? Because when you are under a siege, you are under an attack of an armed force, a superior force, until a greater force comes on the scene, the lesser force can bow. Can I hear your amen? So the force holding you down needs a superior force, and that is the force of heaven. You need divine intervention. Can I hear your amen? amen? I say you need divine intervention. Amen. Breakthroughs or prosperity or blessings are not tied to any nation. They are connected to God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Because there are nations that are poor and there are still rich people within those nations. And there are nations that are influential, that have affluence, just like the U.S., and there are still so many poor people within. Hello, somebody. So when there is a siege until a greater than he comes, you can't be set free. Look at Luke eleven twenty one. I want us to see something here. Luke chapter 11, verse 21. When a strong man, armed, keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted. And what? Divided his force. When a force holds you down, a greater force must come to liberate you. And the greater force, I'm trusting God that will liberate you is divine force, the force of heaven. Can I hear your amen? I say, can I hear your amen? If God does not help you, no man, no government can help you. But when God helps you, you are truly helped. <laughs> when you are helped by God, you are helped indeed. The king couldn't help this woman. So the king himself cried to a prophet. In 2 Kings chapter 7, he went to the prophet and said, we need a way out because prophets are agents of change. Prophets are instruments in the hand of God for the liberation of the saints. You know, the children of Israel, they were under iron clutches in Egypt. They couldn't liberate themselves. They were more in number, but it wasn't their size. It wasn't their number. They needed a superior force. And when they cried to God, God, every time you cry to God, God will send a man to you. A man that carries the word of God for your total liberation. I believe this, this meeting is packaged primarily for your own change of story. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. God's instrument of liberation and change are his prophets. And except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that builds it. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman wake up in vain. Psalm 127 and verse 1. You know, the bane of the church today is that we are trying to fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. We are trying to fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Can I hear your amen? amen. We are trying to do the spiritual with the arms of flesh. And the arms of flesh will always fail. That is why a lot of people are under siege. 
because they are using their own carnal ways in attempting to fight a spiritual battle. And it will always lead in frustration. Can I hear your amen? I say, can I hear your amen? I say, can I hear your amen? It is through God, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty. Somebody say mighty. Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It is through God that you pull down strongholds. And I want you to know that every instrumentation, every move of God is orchestrated by the word of God. Every move of God is orchestrated by the instrumentality of his word. If you don't put value on the word of God, you cannot know true freedom. I hope you heard that right. If you don't put value on the word of God, you cannot know true freedom. Because everything God does, he does by the instrumentality of his word. Nothing begins without a word. Remember John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was what? God. So nothing begins without a word. So if you are looking for freedom, you need to begin to look for a word. Can I hear your amen? amen? You need to begin to seek a word from the Lord. The scripture says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, through faith, we realize that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made of the things which do what? Appear. Through faith, the words were what? Framed by the word of God. So if you must frame your word, you need a word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Not some. All. The word of God is superior to every challenge confronting you. Can I hear your amen? amen? And God's word will not return to him void. And God is the God that confirms the word of his servant. Isaiah 44, 26. He performs the counsel of his messenger. So if God wants to set you free, every time God wants to change your story, he sends you a word. Until your word comes, your story cannot change. Can I hear your amen? Until your word comes, the siege cannot be lifted. Try as you can, it remains. But when the word comes, your deliverance is sure. Look at Psalm 105. Look at a man here. God sent him ahead. God sent him with divine counsel. But in spite of the fact that God sent him, he was tied down. A lot of people are in the will of God, but they are still tied down. Psalm 105, there's a man here called Joseph. Are you in Psalm 105? He said, moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. That's verse 16. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. He sent a man before them. Who sent him? God. But what happened? He sent him, but they sold him for a servant. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. He was sent, but he was hot. He was sent, but he was captured. Verse 19. Until the time that his word came. When your word comes, that is your time. Anytime your word shows up, your time has come. And I believe that you will know that your word is here. Can I hear your amen? amen. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. 
his freedom answered to the coming of his word. The fact that you are sent does not guarantee your breakthrough. 